today's episode is, is pie destroying your relationships? What? Pie? Am I talking about like peach pie, apple pie, cherry pie? What am I talking about, babe? Listening. Listening. It's really talking about autobiographical listening. And it's something that most of us do because so many of us have never been taught how to listen. You know, we take a lot of classes in school and training and work and on reading and writing and those things. But as we read, you know. Listening, speak, trying to be understood. Right. Because that's that's a human need. It's not just to, in order to understand, you have to be understood. And the thing that really struck me about this, and I kind of mentioned it, mentioned it in episode one, was how we listen. Mm-hmm. You know, we always have taught and we understand the importance of communication and being um, a good listener. And But a part of it is the way we listen. And that was the part to me that has been very transformative because once I heard that, I literally called our daughter I, and, and just said, you know what? I am an autobiographical listener. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. So what we are talking about is pie, and so we don't get too far down the road is P-I-E-A, and they stand for what? Probing, interpreting, evaluating, and advising. So you said you called our daughter. Why did you call her after you kind of heard, or we, we talked about it first, you know? And what we're doing is, we, I think we, we are taking this information and applying it to our relationship, yes. you know? And sometimes you've already been doing these things, and, but now you have the why behind the what. And I think that is so important in every relationship, in every dynamic, in every principle and tool that you uh, kind of assimilate into your relationship. So when you heard the pie. I was, over because basically, you know, I was listening, we were listening to another podcast and it was basically, basically talking about the advice monster. And so it was really kind of like a, a couple of things that we were listening to that really got us to this point of what is pie. And when I learned that, the, so the, the opposite of being an autobiographical listener is actually being an empathetic listener. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. That's the goal. The goal is to become an empathetic listener. And so I was just so um, undone with myself because I realized that that's something that I struggle with. And basically, you get some of the ways to kind of overcome that. But before you can overcome it, you need to first accept what you do and then go to the people that you have struggled with. And that has been one of our biggest struggles because I always thought it was a personality issue, but it really is the way we listen. It was a listening issue. It was a listening issue. And I I love, and even after we talked about this, I looked up the, the definitions. Defining listening is, and this was really good, it's to give attention to take notice of and act on what someone has said, respond to advice or request to make an effort to hear something, be alert and ready to hear something useful, use to urge someone to pay attention to what is going on or what they are going to say. And that, so the, that's listening. Yeah, because there's a difference between hearing. And hearing, here's the definition for hearing. Chance to speak, an opportunity to be heard, an opportunity to express one's point of view, an opportunity to put on one's case, a chance to state your side of the story, to pay attention to. And those are two different definitions, even though they're very similar, they kind of clash sometimes. And I think sometimes we think we're hearing and we're listening and we're thinking about what we are going to respond to. Exactly. Which is goes back to pi, with your communication, the speaking part. Right. But the most important part, I think, is still the listening aspect. Yeah. And it's funny because when we were doing the website, so the website is up, everybody. Woo woo. Rich Relationships. Dot, rich Relationships Us. Dot com. Dot com. Renee, you did an awesome job. On oh, that. thank you. It was a lot of fun. I didn't know that that was in there. But the thing when I kept writing, listen, because on every link you can go and listen. And I noticed that the word 10 is in listen. And for me, because I am naturally a talker, I realize that listening is something that I have to really focus on. And I remember when we were younger, we were in Detroit 
because Gil has always been a good listener. He's always been very quiet, very reserved. And I said, you know what? Let me just try this whole listening thing. So I did like an experiment. So I tried to go a whole day where I didn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> and no one probably noticed I was doing it but me. But I remember being... No, I would probably say people who know you, <laughs> yeah, they, know, they know you were being quiet. Yeah. And so I sat and I was just practicing listening. And you would be so surprised what you hear when you are not listening to respond. When you're just sitting and being quiet. And I, I realized, you know what? I used to always think that quiet people were mean or that they were like something was wrong with them. But you learn so much more from listening. And so this whole idea of not just being quiet, but also trying to understand what the other person is saying has been something for me that has been very um, transformative. And it's something I want to really begin to practice. And so um, if I had to think of the simplest way, because when you look at, you know, autobiographical listening it just sounds so technical and so wordy for me I my practical way to apply it is I should listen to understand how the other person feels right what they mean and how could I help them without me trying to give them advice or without probing without interpreting without um, evaluating. evaluating. Right. And so it, it takes a lot of discipline. And, and again, it goes back to that season of probably being really quiet. Right. And um, I realized that it's easier to talk to the Lord about the things that you see that are wrong. And basically for the person that you're in the relationship with that it's complicated or difficult is more so just to be physically there for them, to be someone for them to talk to, not that you're going to give them advice. Mm hmm. You know, all this stuff requires wisdom, but you know, we all... Hey, Rich Fam, it's Gil Renee. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoy this episode. The full audio version is on our YouTube channel. We love you. And remember, you're more than enough. Bye.